I know not everyone had a good experience of a father as a kid, and sometimes Father's Day, like Mother's Day, can be challenging for people. Uh, maybe your father was not nice, maybe abusive, maybe uh, absent. Uh, so when we sing a song like that, it's just good to be reminded, whatever our experience was, earthly experience, that we've got a good, good father, and he loves us, and it's who he is. It's who he is. All right, I'm going to give you two choices today. Choose the second, please. I'm going to give you two choices today. Okay, first, I will preach from 1 Kings about how, how all the different kings did really poorly and then their entire families were wiped out. Um, that... <laughs> Second choice is we get to hear from fathers today, much like we did on Mother's Day, uh, just kind of their experience of fatherhood. And uh, we're going to tie it into our Bible in a Year um, a sermon series of Where's Jesus um, at the end. But I've got six chairs up here. Uh, I'm one of them. And I think there's four others who are here. So grab a chair or a stool and come on up. We got to stay like kind of within this little loop. And Tane will tell us, uh, Tane will tell us if we're not in the right place. Um, come on up, grab a chair, a stool. If you know you are one of the ones who's going to be sharing today, um, because upwards of a couple of months ago, all the way to several weeks-ish ago, um, I contacted all these, these dads. You want the tall one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, sweet. You take a short one? All right, well, now we have, there we go. Oh, we're, we're going there. Yeah, DJ, I'll grab that one. No, we're good. Are we all, you guys want to curve? Tane, can you see us? Well, now I feel like I'm kind of, here, now I feel like, all right, perfect. So, um, what did I grab? What did I not grab? You can, so everybody say, hello, fathers. <laughs> Sweet. And I want you to know that there is one father up here who has no idea what questions I'm going to ask, because I did have another father who was scheduled to be here, but this other father texted me uh, seriously, like 10 days ago, and said, hey, I can't be there on the 16th, which is today, and I read it as the 18th, and I'm like, hey, no problem, because we got a meeting on the 18th, I said, we'll do a different meeting another day, and then I sent a text to all the dads last night, except you, because you don't have a cell phone, um, and this dad sent me back, hey, I told you I wasn't going to be there, <gasps> so this morning, we've got somebody who has no idea what we're asking, <laughs> um, we won't tell you which one, um, <laughs> But uh, we're excited for this, okay? Um, instead of hearing a, a sermon about how all the kings killed each other and all their families, um, we're going to tie in fatherhood. So uh, we've got the blue mic on this side. So we're going to uh, kind of alternate every other side so that we uh, don't have dead pauses. And if you're going to talk, talk with it up here like an ice cream cone. And if you do that, we will give you ice cream after the service. <laughs> Don't lick the mic. Be, uh, well, you're sharing with Kyle, so um, he's, got, he's got daughters. Um, yeah, and that way the people watching online can also hear. Okay? So first, uh, first question, and we're going to start down there since you don't know what I'm going to ask. Okay? Uh, just tell us your name and the description of your dadhood. Okay? So like uh, kids, grandkids, blended family, single dad, married, all that good stuff. So name and that. All right. My name is DJ Merriam, and I am the father of a beautiful six-year-old daughter, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Solo parenting-ish. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so um, situation basically co-parenting. Co-parenting. Like, yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, Ryan, and, th and then we're going to jump over to you, Tom. Now it's on. Now it's on. <laughs> All right. Uh, I should know that since I used to work audio here. Uh, <laughs> my name is Ryan Chrome, and as I just said, I used to attend church here. Uh, now I attend with my, my wife, Stacy, up at Summit. Uh, but uh, I became a stepfather a little over a year and a half ago. So newly into fatherhood. Yeah, blended family. Very good. Tom? It's Tommy to T you. Tommy, sorry. <laughs> My bad, that's right. He... Jimmy, you should know that. Uh, you're right, Tommy. My bad. Tommy, tell us who you are. <laughs> hey, Tom. 
Tom Knutson, um, uh, retired many, many years ago. Uh, I have multiple families. I have three living children, two, two girls and one boy, four grandchildren, one great-grand, which, which I've only seen once, lives in Arkansas. Uh, in my in my fatherhood, it early when the kids were small, I was working about 500 hours a week. If anybody knows about that type of thing, so I didn't get to see him that much except at night. Well, hey Tommy, and you can't talk too much yet. We got other questions that you're going to be able to answer all that for. Well, I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You I, can skip me, you know. I did mean to questions. cut you off, but I didn't mean to do it in a, in a, a mean way. Um, so we're going to hear the rest of that as, as we keep going. Kyle? I'm Kyle, um, and I run Mermaid Security for four beautiful girls. <laughs> Very good. And, and, and I'm, the, uh, I'm the one that doesn't know what the questions are. Um, <laughs> But I'm Dan McElroy, and I've got two grown kids, and um, that's it. That that's was it. The question, that's right? it. But um, since you have a mic, yeah. and since you are punting on every question, I'm not even going to give you time to think about this first one. What's your favorite part about being a dad? It's sharing myself with with my kids. That's mm. that's what I like the best. Very good. Good answer, Tom. Tommy. Favorite part about being get, a dad? Get to finish now? Yep, get to finish now. Oh, okay. Whether you're answering the question or not. I've, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> you were working 500 hours a week and about to tell us the favorite part of being a dad when you were able to oh. be around to be a dad. Right. My, I missed my kids uh, growing up, honestly. It, it was very difficult on me, but when... Uh, when I did get time and quit my three jobs that I was working, I was a chief pharmacist for a hospital and for a clinic and for a nursing home. So I was running all the time a 24-hour call, and somehow the sheriff got my name too, so he, he called me quite a bit. Uh, but I missed the younger years of my kids until they got to be teenagers. Then I had more time, and I put them to work. Took some out. They were delivering prescriptions for me, <laughs> which, which, if, which if you know how that, that goes, that, you know, a 16-year-old kid with the keys to the car. And drugs? And, <laughs> <laughs> and we, we do know how that goes these days. And prescription drugs. Prescription drugs. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Um, did you get to your favorite part about being a dad? Not yet. Did I what? Your favorite part. What's your favorite part? Favorite part about being a dad? It's fun not being able to hear things. <laughs> 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 it, it, my favorite part of being a dad is being a grand, grand a grandson. They, they, I've got a good one. He's, he's a hockey player. And he was represented the state for the Spokane here, Washington, and in the ho hockey tournament. And seeing my great my grandkids. Okay. That's good. That's it. Now, for those who don't know, this is not one of the questions we're going to ask. But Tommy was on the uh, Johnny Carson show, was it? Oh, yeah. I yeah, we well, can't tell that question. You can't tell that story now. I just I just really primed them. <laughs> Uh, so go ahead, give, give the mic to DJ. Really cool story. You guys should ask him about that sometime. Uh, favorite part of being a dad? Thanks. Thanks. I got to follow that. Um, I think so similar. I, uh, my favorite part about being a dad is, is sharing in successes and experiencing the successes of my, my daughters as they, um, whether it's big successes or little successes. Um, just this last week, Juliana was uh, received a major, uh, major award—not the leg lamp from Christmas Story, but she was 
student of the student of the month or student of the year at uh, Lakeside Middle School, and um, and she's actually won that three years in a row. And just kind of hearing what her teachers had to say about her, um, what other adult, adults see in 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 my child, and in um, just kind of what she's going to become is is humbling to know that um, I'm at least doing something, maybe right. Mostly my wife, but did, yeah. thank you. <laughs> okay, very good. DJ. So I think um, just the, seeing the enjoyment of life in my daughter, like experiencing, like you said, experiencing life with her, but then just seeing that happiness, enjoyment. Um, and then also hearing the words, I love you, Daddy. That, that, yeah. 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 Very sweet. Ryan, favorite part about being a dad? Probably the thing that I've enjoyed the most about becoming a dad is just getting to see her experience life and find, find new things, find what she enjoys. This last year, she started playing the bass, the upright bass. And for those of you who have seen Quinelope before, she is the teeniest little thing. Well, you see my wife up here. She's the teeniest little thing, and she's playing the upright bass. And so it's awesome to see, to see her find those new things that she enjoys. That is great. Hold that mic because you're going to start the next question. Uh, they, you, not solely up at Summit. Every once in a while, they'll swing back in here. And when you see Q, is what I call her, Quinelope, ask her about being a certified ninja. Okay? You can't tell that story, but that's for another time. Uh, Ryan, the most challenging part of being a dad. And like you said, you've, uh, you're a new dad in a blended family over the last year plus. Yeah. Uh, being in a blended family, you have different sets of rules at different places. And so probably one of the hardest things is consistency for us. So um, Sunday evenings are usually some of the hardest days for us because that's when she'll, she's ever, every other weekend she's at her dad's house. And so um, just bringing her back into the fold and letting her know that these are the rules here and, and letting her uh, adjust back into that. That's probably one of the hardest things for us. Yeah, thank you, thank you. DJ? Yeah, I, I would say um, just honestly not knowing what to do or how to respond sometimes and wondering like what am I saying and doing and how will that affect her into the future? And I get, I get it, that's probably what a lot of parents will, uh, go through. Um, but I've, the grace in that is that God keeps me one step ahead, so. Wow. Very good. Kyle, most challenging part of being a dad? I could take the cop-out answer and say having a teenage daughter, but I'll, I'll pass on that one and say that um, uh, right now I'm going through my career and um, I work full-time. I do uh, reserves on the weekend, um, one weekend a month, and um, I think for me it's, it's missing, out on, missing out on things, um, even from like the, the mundane things like Amazon box forts, which are the new blanket forts, um, to soccer matches and um, other school activities. I think that's kind of the big thing is, is knowing, knowing that I've got a, a great partner, a great wife um, who's there for those things makes it easier, but it's still hard to, to know that I'm missing out on those things. Yeah, for sure. Tommy, most challenging part about being a dad or grandpa or great grandpa? Well, the great grandpa is that I don't get to see her. For, mm -hmm. I only got to see her for a few hours, and she's about four years old now. So that was very sorrowful. And a grandpa, like I say, my my grandsons are, you know, terrific. My kids. My daughter is here. She is very successful. She's a teacher, and I love to hear her with the kids. Mm. They, they, she teaches out of our home and uh, just does a wonderful job. They love her and she loves them. And my other daughter, who's uh, pretty outgoing and she just got back from New York, at, or was it Washington, D.C., that was, she's the head of the realtors of Washington. And my one son is is uh, works for Vista, 
and he uh, is in he's an electrical engineer, and he's, he's very proud of the way these kids all went through college and all got advanced degrees and everything, and, and he's in charge of about four or five of the of the counties around here. So wow. they've all done well, and I'm proud of every one of them and my grandkids. Thank you. Dan, most challenging part of being a dad? Um, well, it kind of goes hand in hand with, with the best part, which is sharing myself, and it's um, admitting when I'm wrong. Wow. What, you, what you're seeing is two different... Uh, when, we, when we set up this Mother's Day panel and, and Father's Day panel, we knew the moms could talk, because tr uh, traditionally women talk more than men. Um, but we're, we're seeing some of both this time, short answers and longer answers, which is so good. Um, prayers and hopes you've had for your kids, and I'm going to not make you go first this time. DJ, prayers and hopes you've, you've had for your daughter um, along the process. Uh, well, the ones or, I or whatever question I initially to, sent you, <laughs> I planned the answer to be. Um, I think the yeah, to, that she would know Jesus, that she would love him and follow him. Um, but now I see like um, hope for a family, um, a good family. So yeah, very good. You want to jump into that one, or you want to you want to yeah. think? Okay, prayers or hopes that you had for your kids. Um. Some of them have been, you know, as, as our kids have gone through various health-related things, um, you know, just praying them through those situations. Um, and then just as, they, as they've planned their futures, you know, school and college and things like that, just praying for them to make good choices along those ways and, and just praying for them when they're away from my direct supervision or whatever, like I really do any of that kind of stuff. But... Um, Praying for them when they're away from me, and um, and just praying for their future. Praying for um, uh, for them to develop the kind of relationship with God that um, that He is drawing them into. Mm -hmm. so. Very good, Tom. Any specific prayers or hopes for your kids, grandkids, great grandkids? Yes. <laughs> they uh, they exceeded my expectations. Actually, great. And they are all Christians and go to church. The kids are, are lovely. In fact, we just got back from a large church meeting yesterday with, and uh, there was pastors from all over the country that came for this, for Jerry Foster. I don't know if you know Jerry, but he was the head of the Bible, Bible school here in town. Okay. And he passed away here a while ago. So, so your kids, grandkids, great grandkids are already uh, exceeding your hopes and the prayers that you prayed over the years. Well, all except for one. You know, she's only four years old, and she's gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't sure where that one was going. Thank you, <laughs> Kyle. Prayers and hopes for your daughters. So I had to uh, write this down. I want to make sure I get it right because uh, I I did. I mean, I, I do the nightly prayers with my girls, um, but I think my, my prayers uh, for them is that they grow up to love Jesus and to help people. Um, and and I, I know they will. I, I, I know they're acting that out and living that out. Um, but I, I just, that's, that is absolutely my, my boiled down prayer for them. Yeah, good. And Ryan, I think you're the, you haven't answered this one, right? No. Uh, that she truly gets to learn and know who the person of Christ is, and right. and that and that she treats people that way. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing here. I mean, it's one thing to know Christ, but if you're not treating people on earth like Christ would, then you've missed the boat a little bit there. Very good, thank you. You have the mic. So, this is uh, Father's Day number two for you, right? Correct. What's your ideal Father's Day look like? <laughs> I'm still learning what Father's Day and being a father means to me, only being a year and a half, two plus into this. So we actually joked about this a little bit this last week because we had a little hard time uh, as um, my, my mother-in-law and, and Stacy and I were, were talking about last week, what do you guys want to do? And my father-in-law, Ted, 
uh, who kind of just looked at each other like, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it took me a little bit of time. And so we're going out somewhere nice to eat and, and actually maybe getting a little bit of time to myself. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Very good. I've been uh, a dad for 20, almost 21 years now, and I still don't know what my ideal one looks like. So, uh, Kyle, got a mic. Um, so I initially wrote down uh, kind of a, a nice day, 75, <laughs> warm, sunny. Um, the, smell of, the smell of lilacs blowing into the Nowhere open close window. to a beach, because I hate the sand, um, and, and uh, going to a, a matinee ball game. But I started thinking about it, and... Um, that's not really how I want to be a dad. I want to, that would be like a birthday for me, but mm. being a dad would be still the nice weather. We could go outside, um, playing games with the girls, um, whether it's, whether it's getting beaten cribbage by Sadie or, um, or, or building Lego with, uh, with the other girls or, or, or Sadie too. She likes Legos. Um, but just, just investing and, and doing that time with the girls. Um, I think that's, that, that, it ch changed my mentality, um, just in the, in the, in thinking about what would be a great Father's Day for me. Okay, very good. Tom, you've lived a few Father's Day, a few Father's Days. What does your ideal Father's Day look like? Today. Today. <laughs> yeah, feel free to pass the mic on to DJ. All right. No, he's like, nope, I got more. Well, <laughs> since you gave me the phone, I'm going <laughs> to... <Wow. laughs> oh, every day is a great day just to have the kids. And I remember my father, and I just loved them dearly. And mm -hmm. I love every one of my kids. And they follow God. And Good. What else can I do? Yeah. yeah. No, I like that. Thank you. Dan, ideal Father's Day. Um, well, I'm going to have a pretty good one today. My son and I are going to go and have lunch at P.F. Chang's, and then we're going to see the new Mad Max movie. So, I mean, that wouldn't happen every year, but that sort of thing um, is right up my alley. Very good. And DJ? Yeah, um, you're not alone as far as um, not knowing what the ideal would be. I think realizing, oh, I just want to experience my favorite thing, which is seeing my daughter enjoy life. Mm. So if that means I get to spend time with her, great. Perfect. All right, so those are all the easy questions. We're going to um, maybe combine some of the more challenging ones. Um, God's traditionally spoken of as a father in Scripture and throughout church history. How does that terminology um, approach you being a dad, and does it add any additional weight to your experience of being a dad? We're going to start with DJ, and if you want to pass it off, you don't have to, but if you want to, okay? DJ, so the ultimate yeah. question, how has God as Father shaped that, that terminology, shaped your approach of being a dad, and has it added any weight to fatherhood? Uh, yes, it has added weight. I see, um, like, learning about who God is and from the Bible, um, his heart as a father, the love he has, and, like, um, I don't know, I grew it, even in like high school, college, like experienced some of that where um, seeing people who like didn't have a father and like, wow, how, how much are they missing? Um, so having that heart for children, um, for teaching, for helping train, um, puts responsibility on me. I feel it. I feel the weight of it. Um, I want to be like God. I want to be a good father. Um, I understand that I need his help to do that, um, but I think part of that is, for me, um, how do I protect, how do I train, how do I nurture, yeah, that's where I see it. Okay, very good, thanks, DJ. All right, Dan, uh, know the question? I do. Okay, fire away. So, um, I wasn't that close to my dad. Um, I came to faith as a high school student um, at the age of 15, and um, through, through my youth group and through my church, um, developed a lot of great relationships with, with men that I would consider mentors and father figures for me. And um, I was involved with student ministry for a lot of years and got to play a similar role with, with other kids. And so 
I had a lot of kind of preview to fatherhood before I was married and had kids. And so um, having that model and, and, and seeing it lived out by other people and then having the opportunity to kind of practice before it was kids that I was fully responsible for molding um, was, was a really good thing. So I don't know that I'd see it as a, as a weight. I certainly see it as a responsibility. Mm. Um, but there's, there's really almost a weight lifted by knowing that I, I have a heavenly father that I can use as a, a model and as well as the men in my life that have served as, as mentors to me along the way. So that's good. Me. Very good. Tom, God as father, knowing that terminology, has that affected how you fathered? I hope so. Uh, it uh, has been several times in our life when, when tragedy hits, you know, and it, if it wasn't for our father in heaven, I probably wouldn't have made it through. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just one of those things. We've, as you get older, you'll, 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 people understand that. And uh, they rely on God more than you know. So. Yeah, very good. Very good. Kyle. Uh, there, there's a lot to live up to. Um, and um, as we sang, uh, um, God is a good, good father. Um, and I, I try to, I try to be that. I'm, I, I like to think I'm an okay. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, God is good, and I'm just trying to even remotely shine through a little bit on that. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. As I reflect on God as my father, and and how how what I need to do to kind of live up to what that is. There's a lot there. There's a lot to unpack. But as long as I'm using that as my example, I think that's what I have to rely on. It's, it, it, I keep coming back to that, that as long as that's the framework and that's the, the, what I'm trying to use when I'm parenting and fathering her, um, that's, that's, is there a lot to live up to there? Yeah, most definitely, for sure. Uh, but. Uh, but also, I know my uh, godly father gives me grace, and so that's why I, I try to do that same thing and impart upon that, uh, that, you know, she's still figuring things out, so I got to make sure that I'm using the, the things that he's modeled for me, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm modeling exactly how he's fathering me, doing the same thing to her. Very good. Very good. I'm going to say it's safe to assume that as you guys read Scripture— as you see God described as Father, and as you see His attributes, character traits, I'm safe to assume you guys see that and, and say, I would like to live that way too. Yeah? Okay, good. That answers question eight. Question number nine. <laughs> We've been doing Bible in a year now for uh, six and a half months or five and a half, whatever we're into. Um, and each day we have readings. And the reading for today, we're not going to have them talk about the, the Old Testament reading. Uh, we're going to look at the, the proverb, okay? So the, one of the proverbs, one of the verses for today was, love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. Okay, so I'll read that again. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. And I'll take a little liberty and say perhaps even maybe could create rifts between fathers and children uh, when a fault is not forgiven. So, um, if you're willing, share one story of successfully forgiving, forgiving a child and perhaps a story where you dwelt on it a little bit too long and it um, maybe created a rift. Is that a fair question? You want to go first? I got this. Okay. Um, so one story where I could forgive better. Um, I, I'm a very practical person, um, if anybody knows me. And the best way to not cry over spilled milk is to 
fill the glass less and less and less each time. So then there is no spilled milk. Well, that's not forgiving and allowing them to learn. Um, I know it's an easy, easy one to, to think, and I, I actually posed the question to the girls, and they, um, all of them said, oh, yeah, you've, you've held on to things, but they couldn't name a time. They've all said, oh, yeah, you've forgiven us. They couldn't name a time. So <laughs> it was kind of... So I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm plus and minus in both of those, so net zero on that. So we'll just go with the, the milk one. I, I just, I, I realized it last night as I was even filling up milk that, um, yeah, I, I didn't fill up the milk all the way last night and, um, just because I've learned that um, a certain six-year-old who will soon be seven um, is active and likes to dance and do things at dinner that will consequently knock milk over and I'm not Spider-Man and can't reflex enough to catch that milk so I don't fill it as much so there's not as much to clean but I need to allow her to grow so I think that's probably my biggest one. Okay very good and the next week don't let me uh, forget that said six-year-old will be turning seven on Sunday. On Sunday, on Sunday. yeah. Okay yeah. yeah. Ryan. Uh, love prospers when a fault is forgiving, uh, forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends or father and child. A success and maybe uh, a challenge. Le learning experience. Learning experience. Yeah. I'll start with that one. It's been a number of months ago now, uh, but we had an incident where, uh, where Quinn uh, reached out and struck her mom. And I reacted fairly quickly to that and she did not care for the way I <laughs> reacted to that and it, and it resulted in a couple of days of us not talking to each other at all and, and Stacy had to, to step in and said you guys need to knock it off and figure this out but um, just a learning experience I mean, it just, it's part of growth right yeah. and, and so um, we did and things have gotten better and, the, the, the positive one actually just came just this last week, honestly. Um, we, had a, we had a bit of a learning experience. Something happened where she, she did something she wasn't supposed to. And um, my office is downstairs. And uh, she came down without being asked. I, I didn't find out that she hadn't been asked until later on. Stacy told me, oh, no, I was not aware that she did this. But she came down and, and, and apologized to me for her actions. Wow. So I was like, okay, maybe things are starting to plug in a little bit. So, wow. yeah. Great example of both, both the, the plus and the minus. Dan, love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends, people. Uh, a positive uh, that you experience that as a dad and maybe a, a growing place. So I have over the years learned to be quick to forgive. Um, and I learned it actually even before being a, a parent by, like I said, having been involved in church leadership because there's lots of opportunities to, um, to be able to, or to need to forgive quickly. Um, and so I, I can't think of any that didn't work out the way that I would want and that I think God would want, but, um, and I think more of the times when I'm the one that needs to be forgiven. Mm. Um, and a recent example of that is when, uh, when I was in the hospital just recently um, with this whole amputation thing that went on, um, as I was getting ready to be discharged, I had the opportunity to um, either go home or to go on to rehab. And I had had some bad experiences with, with post-hospital care um, previously, and I was really fearful and not eager to um, to go into rehab. Um, I really felt like I want to go home. I don't see that there's a value to this. This is going to be a terrible thing. Um, and I said some things to my daughter who was up here at that time, um, supporting my wife and, and me, um, and said some really hurtful things um, in the moment, you know, and there are things that I could justify if I wanted to, to say, well, you know, that's, I was in a bad situation, blah, 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 and they don't understand the situation that I was in before and why I responded the way I did. Um, but um, there, there was definitely a rift for a little bit that I 
recognized and wanted to, to resolve as quickly as possible, particularly because my daughter, daughter doesn't live in the area. I didn't want it to be something that, you know, she'd take back home with her and that, you know, things wouldn't be resolved with, with her. So I, I spent a lot of time in prayer and um, was able to kind of reconcile things and, and apologize to her and, and gain her forgiveness um, during that time. And so that for me is the, the example that comes up as something most recently um, where, where I was the one at fault and, and needed to seek forgiveness. So. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. DJ? Yeah, so like Dan, I thought more of um, ways that I've made mistakes and I need to ask my daughter for forgiveness. And like you, wanting to make sure that I keep those short accounts, that she doesn't have something to dwell on. Um, I know how easy it is for me to dwell on the mistakes that I've made, and, and I don't want her to add um, something. So, yeah, trying to make sure that um, we are, um, how does it, that the, the sins are forgiven, that things are cleared. So. Yeah, very good. Tom, do you have an answer for this one? Yeah, I usually say something wrong. <laughs> it, it's, I start out right, and it, it doesn't end up right. <laughs> So love, love prospers so, when so. a fault is forgiven, uh, but dwelling on it separates close friends. Do you have a good story of a time where forgiveness was granted and it was good, or maybe where it was withheld and it was not good? Well, for me, I hope it was lots of it that was forgiven for me for what I say, but I, I usually, my thinking doesn't always end up with what I'm feeling, you know? Yeah. I think everybody has that problem once in a while. But my sons, uh, my my youngest and my and my second son, he uh, decided to take my pickup truck for a ride one day. And they went down by the river, got it stuck, burned out my transmission trying to get it out of there. And I and I never never even. Yeah, <laughs> I never uh, scolded them or anything for that. I just was just happy they were all, all okay. I just wow. love them too much. So. Wow, thank you. Um, I, I want us to notice, uh, one of the questions I had originally asked this group that we're not really answering is, what's an additional weight you carry as a dad, right? And I figured that all of the ones up here would be like, well, providing or protecting. Notice how this, this conversation of forgiveness most of it was all the times that we had to be forgiven and the desire to not be that stumbling block for their kids. I think there's something powerful in that. So well done, dads. Um, Tom, you get, the, you get the final, uh, you get to go first on the final question. A proverb like this, love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. How does a proverb like this point to Jesus? Jimmy? I, I forgive you for <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, well, Ryan? <laughs> Thank you, Tom. How does a proverb like this point to Jesus? Hmm. While he's thinking, DJ? <laughs> God's our ultimate forgiver. I mean, he's forgiven us of everything we've done. Yeah. So... Good. Yeah, just that um, as he is our father, like the unconditional love. I know that um, I don't expect my daughter, um, how do I say this? To, oh, how do I, sorry, I'm confusing my, myself. Um, the idea that I don't need her to come to me to ask for give, for give, forgiveness. I love her enough that I will give it, mm -hmm. um, even if she doesn't ask for it. And so knowing that Okay, I can go to God like that, and it's there. Yeah, good. Kyle? Uh, I have, uh, on my notes, it was real easy this time, uh, Jesus forgives. Um, and I could mic drop there, but it, throughout his entire ministry, Jesus continually forgave. It was everything, everything he did was showing love by, by forgiving, you know, and, and fulfilling the prophecies to bring... Israel back to, to, to God and, and the Gentiles back to God and bringing people back to God, 
Jesus forgives. And, and with his last breath, Jesus forgave. Mm. I mean, it, it, this one was, you, you said four easy questions, but this one was easy for me um, because Jesus is just the example of forgiveness. Very good. Very good. And Dan, anything else? Um, yeah. I, can you read the verse one more time? Yep. Uh, Love prospers when a fault is forgiving, forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. So it, it made me think of the fact that God really desires community with us and that his forgiveness is driven by a, a desire to restore community with us. And so that's where I see Jesus in, in yeah. this verse is he was willing to do everything to allow us to be in community with him. Wow, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, I would ask for a round of applause, but I'm not going to. I'm going to ask for a sitting O, which is just shy of a sitting ovation, okay? Uh, yeah, there we go, there we go. Uh, and you guys can clap for them as they're going to their seats, but while they're going to their seats, go ahead and stand. Yeah, it's Father's Day. We're going to end this thing like this because there's ice cream to be handed out. Gentlemen, thank you for, uh, for that.